Hey guys, this is Jack from Team Empire, and today we are covering new support for DSSO5 and DSSO6, the first one being uh, Festival Collection 2023 with some new lyrical support, along with DSSO6, which is the Graham Grace uh, kind of trial deck slash like deck set, I guess you can say. It's more like a structure deck, because Graham Grace actually got a ride line now, which is super generic. So that's cool. Uh, we're going to start off with the lyrical support first, and then we're going to talk about the Graham Grace cards, which will be pretty simple. But the first cards we have are two triple rares, which are generic triple rares. So the first one we have is the discard fodder triple rare that every other nation got in set 10. Lyrical is getting one in Festival. This is Coloring One's Wish Vosh Blank. To grade two, it has the same effect as all the other ones. When its card is discarded from hand during the ride phase, cost Soul Blast one, put this card on the bottom of the deck to draw a card. Pretty simple. A lot of lyrical decks don't even use their soul very frequently, so this can be like an instant staple in those decks. So that's great. Along with that, she has the similar condition as the other ones. When placed in a record circle, if you persona row that turn, you get an effect for a counter blast. She gives the Vanguard a skill that says, in the, the turn, continuous Vanguard circle, all your former units get power plus 5k. So she can turn every persona ride you do into plus 15k power as opposed to plus 10k power to the front row. Or if you have two of them and you have enough CB, you can use two of these to get 20k power to your front row. Overall, a really powerful generic card for Lyrical. Pretty much can be played in like almost any of the decks, as long as you're not like too specific. So if you're a Lyrical player, I definitely recommend picking this up from like any deck that you play, besides like Kyrie, because this is just gonna keep getting better over time. Next up, we have probably my favorite card out of these, because it's so weird and unique. It's Snuggle Up to the Moonlight uh, Adelheit. So it's a, first of all, it's a ghost, which we'll talk about the uh, applicability for that in a second, but it has two skills. The first skill is continuous in regard circle or guardian circle. If your opponent's drive check or damage check has revealed a trigger unit during this turn, this unit gets plus 10k power and plus 10k shield. Then we have the second effect that says auto regard circle. At the end of the battle in which this unit was boosted, cost soul blast one and perform one of the following. You ch uh, choose one of your rear guards in the same column as this unit and bounce it back to your hand or cost remove from play and over trigger from your drop zone, choose up to one unit card from your hand with a grade equal to or less than your vanguard and call it to rear guard circle. So this is like pretty interesting. That first skill I like quite a lot because, you know, if your opponent like tries to sack you or gets a trigger, she becomes a 10k shield which can be used super early. So that's great. It mitigates one of the problems about grade threes that they have no shield. That's great. And then also, she also works offensively, so if they check a damage trigger, she'll be 23k to 33k on Persona Ride turns. That's great. Uh, very unique condition. I don't think there's ever been a card that like relies on your opponent checking a trigger without like, you know, saying directly saying it. You know, there's never been a card that directly says if your opponent damage checked a card, then activate this effect. So that's pretty cool. Another effect's kind of cool, it's like a reverse Yuika. So Yuika Soul Blast wants to bounce the thing she boosted, this Soul Blast wants to bounce something else. So it's kind of similar, but it has to be boosted, so it can only bounce back really boosters, or grade ones, or zeros. Which is okay, I mean maybe if you like, have a card in Lyrical that like calls a card from drop, like a trigger, you can use her to bounce that trigger or PG back into your hand, which is pretty nice. Um, and then, she also has an, that other effect, which is like really weird, but I kind of love it. It's a one-time skill because it removes the overtrigger from the game, meaning they're turning overtriggers into like a cost too, which is pretty interesting. Um, I know why it's like that, because Soul Blast 1 for an extra multi-attack with no other conditions is kind of nuts. So I understand why it's they're removing an overtrigger. But it's just, I've never seen a condition like that. That's super cool. So basically, Lyrical's overtrigger will have extra usefulness. It'll either be useful on drive check to give uh, 10k power to your entire board for the rest of the fight, damage check just to like end your opponent's turn, uh, in hand because they can just guard with it, and now it has usefulness in the drop. So really cool. A couple of decks this might be useful in is uh, obviously Felty Rosa because Felty Rosa does use ghosts and she is a ghost. And one of the problems with Felty 
is that if your opponent checks the defensive, your extra attacks aren't going to mean much unless you put extra resources into them. But if you call her from the top deck, she'll just automatically be 23k, which will hit over defensive triggers. That's great. And the other one is Felty sometimes doesn't have enough cards in their hand to like discard for PGs or maybe just like have extra cards to call, like clear their board. She can do that by soul blasting one and just bounce something back to your hand. And she can even generate a six attack for her by using her skill and removing an overture from drop. So I think she's a great card for Felty, and it really depends on what the new Felty actually does. But I think she's a great pickup for Felty Rosa players. Another one that might be better is Lilfa. One of the problems with Lilfa was that Lyrical didn't have a lot of good generic grade threes, and she could only call grade threes. So if you use her now, she'll be a really good grade three that you can use because she has a couple of utility spots because you're playing a lot of grade threes and you don't have a lot of shield. She can act as a 10k shield as long as your opponent checks a trigger. And she can also act as a 23k booster or 23k attacker. That's just really nice. And even then she can also multi-attack even further for Lilfa in that case with her second skill. Overall, I think she's a really cool card. I'm going to pick up a couple of her for my Lyrical decks, if I, in case I ever want to build one in the future. Um, yeah, she's just great. I think they really did a good job of making a card that's like interesting, but not like broken. Now let's move on to the... Um, oh, I'm sorry. We actually have a promo card for Lyrical. I forgot about this one. This is Friends and Powerful Support. This is a special moment with you, Struss who says, Katia's Rearguard Circle, if the total number of rearguards with the friend or powerful ability is three or more, this unit gets boost. And then auto, when this unit is placed during the main phase, choose one card from your soul and put it into your drop. If you vanguard with friend or powerful ability, you may choose a card with the friend or powerful ability from your drop, call it to Rearguard Circle. And if you call the card, you cannot call cards in the drop zone until end of turn. Overall, good card. Like, I don't really know what to say. It's just a really nice generic, not generic, it's it's for both though. So it can be played in both these decks, adding nice support and does what both of them want to do. Friends want to have like a full board so they can use Fortia in order to restand. And um, Herminia wants to call cards with powerful ability to use their powerful counterblast effects. And she also doesn't counterblast herself, which is really good. She does like effectively soul blast one, which is good because powerful wants to have no soul and from what i remember friends use basically no soul so for any other soul blast cause so that's that's great good card not like a broken promo or anything but it's just a really necessary promo for the decks so overall i like it it's okay I, i'm not like the friends player i don't really play a lot of um friends are powerful player i don't really play those decks but still pretty cool now we can move on to the Graham Grace ride line. So starting off, we have the starter, which is starting magic, uh, Stariri, who says when she's wrote upon, if you went second, draw a card, just a simple starter. Nothing much to say here. Moving on. Incision Angel is the grade one of the ride line, who says auto, when this unit is wrote upon, draw one, choose a card from your hand, and discard it. This is okay because it allows you to like dig through your deck even further and discard certain cards that you might want to have in the drop, like Maple, for instance or your other maple, grade one, grade two. Pretty nice because Graham Grace does actually play those cards. However, I feel like grade one maple is still a better ride target than this because with the grade two, which we'll talk about right now, Divine Sister Gateo Basque, when you would ride it from your ride deck, you may soul blast one instead of discard a card from your hand. You can actually soul blast the maple you ride. And then when you persona ride on your turn four, you can call her out. Overall, that's I think that's a pretty interesting uh, cost for that because it's a guaranteed soul blast to get your maple out. And as for the grade two, she actually is really really good. I think this ride line might have a little bit of like, funnily enough, a little bit of synergy more in Bastion than anything else because Bastion's ride line has always been kind of like iffy. I like Rooks a lot because he allows you to draw a card, but effectively, Divine Sister Gateo Basque does the same thing. She allows you to effectively draw a card by saving one card from your hand by soul blasting one. And Incision Angel can allow you to draw cards and dig through your deck for more of your combo pieces. So even though this is okay and an interesting generic ride line, especially for Graham Grace, I think generically it might have for me more use in something like Bastion or any other Keter Sanctuary deck that might come out in the future. 
Overall, this ride line is fine. It's not like the best, not the most interesting, but it's just a it's just a generic ride line that's meant to help the nation overall. And I think that's that's perfectly fine. I think that's really cool. And I'm excited to see what Favniel gets next. Speaking of that, before we go, we have one more thing, which is the Graham Grace deck list. So we have a couple things to talk about. It comes with four per, the three Persona rides, obviously, two Fasado, two Cadwalla, four Drilling Angel, four uh, Lagre, the 15k booster, I don't remember her name, two Painkiller Angel, three of the 13k booster, eight crit, three vanilla draws, which are a little unfortunate, four heal, and then one Amarta Noah, which is great, the Kettle Sanctuary over trigger. And then finally, the most exciting part is two of the Graham Grace promo card. Now, unfortunately, it only does come with two and not four, but that's, that's fine. It, the, it, these decks are going to be like $35, which for that promo card is like really good price for like all the stuff you get in here. And what's interesting here is that it actually has four, it, says, it comes with four copies of a card, of a new card that we don't know about yet. So I assume it's going to be like direct Grand Grace support, like newest Grand Grace card. That's pretty cool. I'm excited to see what that card does. And it comes with five reprints that all come in one ofs. So as for what I think these reprints are going to be, I don't know exactly. I can take a guess though. I'm going to say one of them is going to be Maple, like a one of Maple, grade two or grade one. Because they know that they play Maple in the deck, Grand Grace players. I'm going to say one of them is Kyber, which would really incentivize people to pick up this deck, even if they don't play Graham Grace, because getting a Kyber in this deck would be insane. I'm going to say another one is the Counter Charge Girl for a Keter in set 8, the generic, because she's just really strong, always has been pretty strong. I'm also going to say the other ones will be maybe a one of, of an effect trigger, possibly, maybe an effect draw, just because... We have these draws and they're okay, but maybe they'd want to incentivize people to buy more of these by having an effect draw on here. And as for the last one, I don't have any idea what it could possibly be. Maybe Elementaria, if I would say so, like just because you could buy this deck and immediately get Elementaria for a stride deck set matchup. Again, I don't know exactly, but it's going to be exciting to figure out what comes in this deck. And overall, the, even without those cards, this deck seems like it's really worth it. It has some good stuff in here. Only minor upgrades need to be made. So I'm pretty excited for this deck, and I'm excited to see uh, what Favniel and Orphist also get in their decks. Without further ado, guys, that's the end of this video. I want to thank you all for watching. Thank you for... Um, uh, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss another video from us. All right, guys. See ya.